Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the session. If you're joining live, you know, we look forward to engaging with you. We look forward to sharing with you. And if you listened to this on the recording, uh, sorry you missed the live session, but hope it's equally valuable. For those of you that don't know me or that I haven't had the privilege of meeting just yet, I see looking through the list, some of you I have at least, some uh, very old names uh, and some brand new ones. My name is Harry Welby Cook. And together with Peter Scholes, we brought Action Coach to South Africa 15 years ago. So in fact, 3rd of May last month was our 15 year anniversary uh, in South Africa. So although it's a global business, this year uh, in August, we'll actually be 29 years old, having originated in Australia in 1993. The business today operates in 80 countries around the world. Uh, and we have a thousand business coaches in the team. But for you today, the purpose of this is a very informal, casual discussion. It's a chat. So um, we're going to be sharing a little bit from our side. But if you've got any questions, you know, please type them into the chat box and let's make this uh, a little bit interactive. Uh, many of you are sitting where Hein was, our guest, not that long ago and uh, have some questions, have some ideas, have some frustrations uh, or concerns, and we're trying to unpack as many of those as possible uh, for you. So introducing our guest for today, it's um, Hein Kruger from, well, a little bit difficult to say where he's from, because uh, Hein is from Joburg originally, then lived in KZN for many years, uh, joined the business to operate out of Belito in KZN. And in fact, January, him, him and his wife, Rieta, took a little bit of a exciting uh, right turn and went to Mauritius for a bit of an adventure. So still runs his business uh, in Belito, but from Mauritius. So we'll definitely have to touch on that a little bit. He did um, say that he was kind enough to, he still got his baggies and his slops on, but he's dressed up in at least a shirt for the meeting today. So why, why I asked Hein to join us today is that he's new enough to still kind of have those memories of where you might be sitting today. He's still new enough to be in that kind of startup phase and growth phase, but he's been around a little bit longer and in some trying times to have got through the teething issues. Uh, so Hein joined us in September of 2019. He went to training then with great fanfare, launched his business towards the end of the year. You know, great timing, spring, excitement for the end of the year. Took the break in December and had hardly gained traction in January. And we went into March 2020, which was obviously interesting. And then, you know, all the rest from that. But and thanks for joining us. And particularly from Mauritius, thanks for putting on a shirt. And I really look forward to engaging and discussing with you this afternoon. Sorry. Uh, good evening to, or good afternoon to everyone on the call as well. Really looking forward to sharing a little bit more about myself and Action Coach. So let's go back almost that three-year period. Uh, you had a very lucrative corporate career. You've done a range of really great stuff. And you were possibly sitting where many of our guests are today going, I, I need a change. I've come across these people called Action Coach what was the motivation to get into this business in the first place? What, what was your thought process in exiting something that was maybe more certain, which is a corporate job, and then joining and starting your own business coaching franchise? Thanks, Eddie. Yes, I, I think there's a, you know, there's, there's, there's a whole lot of dimensions to that. I think that, you know, just a little bit, little, a bit of background about myself. So I studied finance. Um, and I ended up in, um, I, I did articles at one of the big article firms, but then I ended up uh, in corporate in corporate roles, mostly in the in the Remgrow group and mostly in the food businesses that that Remgrow actually actually do. Um, so it's the sugar businesses and the chicken businesses and so on and so forth. And yeah, you know, the sort of I started life as an accountant and I went through the ranks, various roles and various businesses, but I ended up being. Uh, at one stage, the chief financial officer for one of the businesses, a financial director I was more in what they, uh, and then I was a commercial executive um, and on, you know, on various boards, the business in, in South Africa, obviously Swaziland, Botswana. Um, and yes, there was, you know, 
I think there was a lot to it. If I, you know, think back about it now, it was actually quite surreal, you know, because we were, we were, uh, had the office next to um, Grand Central Airport in Midrand. And, you know, we would almost on a weekly basis be on a corporate jet and go off to sugar factories or, or whatever the case might be. Um, and, you know, that was, that was, it was pretty rewarding and so on and so forth. But, you know, after 25 odd years of that, I'd almost like it, it, it sort of run its course. Um, and, you know, I think you get into a bit of a rut where, you know, it's the same routine and rhythm that happens over and over. So through the business, I ended up uh, in, in Durban, um, which was a great opportunity and, and, and something different for us to do, do, to um, experience and so on and so forth. But at that stage, I'd always harbored the sort of dream, I guess, to have my own business and dabbled in little bits and pieces of that. But, but you know, little side hustles and those type of things never really happen because, you know, it, it's like they always have to survive on the scraps of, of your time or whatever the case might be. So, yes, I looked at the, the action coach opportunity and I think, you know, the benefit of franchising, the right franchising, is that you are in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So there's a huge amount of systems and, and support and so on and so forth. And I definitely can say that, you know, so my academic background is that I did a BCom honors, I did an MBA and so on and so forth. And then, you know, you would have thought with all that and so many years in ex of experience in corporate that, you know, I would have been able to do what I do today on my own. And that's with the benefit of hindsight, absolutely not the truth because I see it all the time, but there's a very big difference between corporate business and being in business by yourself. Um, and also for business owners going from a corporate background, starting a business, many of them ends up back with us saying, hang on a second, this is now very different because, and I, I've unpacked the reason for that. And most of that really is due to the fact that in, in corporate roles, often people are only looking after a certain aspect of a business. So they might be in finance or they might be in marketing or systems. Whereas where you're starting your own business, you have to be financial director, marketing director, operations director, and so on and so forth. So you have to take care of all, all, all of those aspects. Um, and then of course, you know, so the same goes if, you, if you're wanting to, to buy a franchise or go into business for yourself. So, you know, obviously at that stage, started engaging with the business, I spoke with Harry. Um, and, you know, so you, you go through a bit of a, a process to check it out and a due diligence process where you speak to other coaches and so on and so forth. And then you have to, you know, make the decision to, to buy the franchise. And yes, you know, so at that stage, because it's, it's not something that's completely tangible, you're essentially buying the system, the processes, the network and the support. So it is a little hard to, to understand exactly what it is that, that you get, but um, there's, a, there's a discovery day that Harry put on that I went to in, um, in Stellenbosch. So we flew out and went through all the systems and the process, and that gives you a sense of, of what it is that you get. But, you know, it's different from when you're buying, for example, a chicken franchise or whatever, where you can see, well, this is the shop for things and so on and so forth. So a lot of it is a little bit intangible, but um, the way the process then works is you, you, you talk to coaches, you figure out whether it's for you or not, and then you, you basically go for training. Uh, at that stage, we, we could physically still get on a plane and you fly to Las Vegas. And yes, you know, so you, uh, you go through the training process. So there's a comprehensive pre-training process. And uh, the training itself, which is, it's only 10 days, but I think it is pretty much most people that's gone through it would agree that it's, uh, you know, it's pretty much life-changing in terms of, um, I think it's a lot of focus on, on sort of mindset stuff, as well as, you know, the how to actually do the coaching and run the business. But um, yeah, so you, you go through that um, and then you come back and um, you launch the business. So there's a, there's a whole structured process to, to actually um, launch the business. But, um, and, I think the, the important thing is, is that the system 
is now just about, I guess, 30 years old. So a lot of what you pay for is the knowledge and the IP that, that's in there. To give you an example, you know, you, there's a structured sales process. So there's a structured marketing process. There's support from the, from the local um, franchise office that, that Harry and, and Peter run. So, you know, you, you don't have to figure anything out. For example, you don't even have to think about how to draft, excuse me, an email to a client. You know, so there's a sales process and the wording's already in the email how to actually draft that, the layout. You don't have to figure out how do I do my bio. So could you, could you do those things on your own? I guess you could. It'll take you a long, long time and you probably, you know, get a lot of it wrong as well. Whereas you have the benefit of a tried and trusted system that's been figured out and proven to work. So you can actually just latch onto that. So, yeah, you, I mean, you obviously look at the initial investment and you think, sure, that is a, that is a, that is a, that is a good amount of money. But I think what you have to look at is what is that compared to what, what is the other options? So, and I think, you know, go and look at, for example, buying a fast food franchise or, or whatever the case might be. How does that purchase price stack up versus what, what Action Coach is offering? And I think the calculations that you have to do is what is the, the payback on your money? And, you know, in other words, how long will it take before you get your money back? And what is the, I guess, the salary or dividends that you could practically earn um, out of the business? So I guess, you know, that's just some, some, some thoughts on, on the, I guess, the, the process and, and the, the, the franchise uh, situation, I guess, for, with Action Coach. Okay. So, so fortunately, we then can end the, the call right here because I think you did the whole sales pitch on that. Just to clarify, <laughs> your, your hair fell out before you joined Action Coach. That was still in your corporate. <laughs> okay. okay. So let's yeah, just, that was let, let's that's just make sure of that. So, I, I, I love that to touch on cost. You can see Heinz been um, around for a while because I love it when people say, oh, a, you know, I like your way you put it, a, a sizable investment. Well, it's, it's cheaper than a one series BMW. Uh, it's cheaper than an A1 Audi. It's cheaper than an A-class Merc. So, you know, compared to what I think is important. But so go back to some of the things that you said, because I think there's relevance in them. And then we're going to talk about some challenges and, and some of the rewards. You mentioned that you've got an MBA, you've got this corporate background. Could you do it on your own? Probably, but then you've got the systems and you shortcut the whole process and that was the motivation. Looking back to where you were before you joined September 2019 and what you paid and how you worked, any regrets, any thinking going, well, you know, maybe I should have just done it on my own? Really, I mean, quite frankly, I don't think that it would have been practical or feasible for me to do it on my own. Obviously, at that stage, you go through this thinking and you, you know, you think, well, yeah, I could probably do it because, you know, I have enough of an accounting understanding and so on and so forth. But only once you appreciate what the, how, how broad and comprehensive the action coach system actually is and what is required, do you, do you realize how little you actually know about small business? I think we're the we're a small and medium business because I, I do think that people that have been in corporate for a long time have a little bit of a sheltered existence in terms of a lot of things just happen without them realizing it. So the systems are just there. The HR department's just there. Marketing just happens um, and, 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 and so on and so forth. And, you know, so, so there's this false perception that you actually good at business and you can go and build and run any business but but you know i, th I think many many a ex-corporate business ended up back as for example my clients where they're like oh this is hard it's so difficult i don't know and i'm like but you've i mean there's a there's a testimonial on my website about a, about a, a quantity surveyor that he's been in quantity surveying for 15 years and you know he came along to me having bashed away on his own for four or five months, not a single client. And as I said to him, buddy, you, you know, you've, you've done 15 years of the same thing, just mm -hmm. actual quantities of aim. You don't know how to sell. You don't know how to market. You don't know how to build your systems. We work together. 
and very quickly he drummed up you know managed to get five six clients and you know now he's really in, a, in an awesome space with lots, lots of business and so on and so forth so i think that touches on possibly some of the other aspects you know the the, the upsides of, of of what we do i sometimes feel that you know yes making money is important and so on and so forth as well but also making a difference and you know so to, to be able to take someone from where they are in business um, and not doing well to a business that really thrives is just monumental for for that person for their family and for their dreams and and aspirations so you know i, th I think just being in a position to have that skill set in the system and the process to do that is is awesome um it is true that you know you don't get success with all clients all the time so you know and there's various reasons for that but coaching is very different from consulting if you if, if folk aren't sure about how that actually works but consulting means that you you know you, you employ someone to do the work for you um and and coaching is a little bit like a sports coach you know so so the business owner has to do the do the actual work you give them the tools and the support and so on mm. to to actually um deal with that and they have to do the work you know so if and often in cases where you know the client doesn't do the work they don't pitch up for the coaching sessions or whatever the case might be it really just gets to a point where you know i guess you both realize well we're wasting each other's time and money mm. but overall you know we've um really had some phenomenal results with, with with a lot of clients um and uh you know and it tends to and and i think the the the, the sort of great thing about it compared to just elaborating a little bit on the difference between coaching and consulting is that clients coaching clients would tend to stick with you for a long time of course it's a monthly coaching fee and you know you know clients that have been with the right coach with with coaches for two three years really achieve phenomenal results mm -hmm. you know so you're talking about doubling profitability or, or even 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 better than that um, you know, so we'll set goals like to double a business in 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 two three years from a from a from a valuation point of view, and you know, using the right tools and processes, and obviously with the business owner doing the work, that 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 totally, you know, is a is achievable. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so I think you know, and we see that, and we've just gone through our uh, cycle end of each financial quarter we get all our clients together and we plan we review the quarter and we plan the next quarter and you, you get to see these phenomenal results in you know between the economy and petrol price increases and interest rates and the ukraine and all of the pressures especially in kzn you've got best year ever highest profit ever growing employing people so i think it, it's not a the reality of the world out there, but it's our reality that we create in this business. So you mentioned something about the quantity surveyor, which I think is is relevant to anybody looking at this business. There's a quantity surveyor. You can do the work of a quantity surveyor, but now he needs to, to do the business development work. He needs to get clients and with your assistance, you know, got traction quite quickly. Yes, there's the structured launch program. Yes, there's the sales process, things you mentioned in the introduction, but how did you go about finding Go back to that launch evening, and I can remember it like yesterday. Um, you know, you and me and Reta all hive of activity before the launch, and you did this launch. Now you're launching yourself uh, in a new venture in your local market to the business. How and where did your first few clients come from, and how quickly did it come? Yeah, look, I mean, I think firstly, depending on your personality and and so on and so forth, the I think the launch is it's quite nerve wracking because the way the way it works is you're putting yourself out there you know so so typically what what action coach does is they help you so you you hire a restaurant or a nice venue and you you invite 50 business people friends family so on and so forth as well and you do what we call a six step uh, presentation to them which essentially is just explaining exactly what action coach does and so on so what you're doing is you're getting the word out there and essentially asking people for referrals. So you're telling everyone that you know, friends, family, business connections, and so on, what it is that you're doing. And some of them might be business owners that might 
want to use some of your services and and then you know others might might refer you or, or whatever the case might be yeah, so you know you you're pretty much putting yourself out there you feel a little vulnerable you've just come back from training so you don't actually know the, the coaching that well and and quite frankly just after there's definitely you have to go through the training and then you start coaching but you definitely get get, get better at it so initially you know you you know i, I think I'm not sure if anyone's really awesome at it from, from the start, but you, uh, I think you, you learn quite quickly how, how to do it and, and so on and so forth. But you know, the process that I follow to, to get clients is obviously what we, what we offer is we do the six-step presentation and then we offer people that are interested a, a complementary coaching session. We refer to that in, in our language as, as a diagnostic, which essentially is you go in and do an analysis of the, of the client's business you analyze what what is good and bad and you have a coaching session with them and you demonstrate the value it works best when you do it through the numbers so you go and say well what, what is your current number of clients uh, profitability so on and so forth and you demonstrate what that could be and that's essentially a, a, a sales meeting where you, where you sign the client up so the, the the process that i followed because you know i wasn't from from kzn so I think if you're in an area, if you've lived in an area for a long time and you've developed a deep network, in other words, you know, you still have your buddies from school and from university and so on and so forth. You have that deep network. It's, it's possibly easier, but it's completely doable to do it in an area that you, that you haven't been in. So, I mean, I just lived in Kaiserin for, for five years. So I had no real deep network, but, you know, I'm quite active in sport and socially and so on and so forth. So, you know, a lot of those people came came to the came to the launch and and what i then did is um initially to start just running a, a, um networking uh, sort of functions we call them profit club which is a bi-weekly session we invite business owners for for breakfast and you know you talk about some business stuff share some business education and so on and so forth and to me it was just about getting myself out there and then, you know, talking to people and exposing them to, to the material and so on and so forth. And, you know, that's how I, I got the first, first couple of clients. Um, a lot of my, 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 my clients actually were also cyclists because, I, you know, I love cycling. And I didn't actively go out and sell to friends whilst we were riding or drinking coffee after, after that or so on and so forth. But I made sure that they knew what I was doing. And then, you know, then eventually people would say, you know, why don't you come for a cup of coffee or, or whatever and chat about this and that aspect of, of my business? And, and you know, some some quite nice clients that are still with me today actually actually came from that. So I think it's quite quite interesting the whole phenomenon around you know selling to to friends and family. I think sometimes it's better to ask them for referrals than to actually try and try and try and sell to them. But that launch helps you to you know get word out there and people know what it is that you do. And everyone always inevitably knows a, knows a business owner. And I think you've got to be quite clear on the type of client that you're looking for. You know, when you just start out the business, you know, you, you get leads, which is prospects or people that might be interested in business. And then eventually you get all types, you know, so you get someone that's just like once thought about starting a business and they, you know, they don't even have a business to people that are quite big or, or whatever the case might be. So as you refine the marketing, you start figuring out what is your ideal client. In other words, what you're, we refer to that as your client avatar. So you can, different coaches, I guess, have, have different sort of targets, but you, know, you can typically say that, you know, I want someone that's been in business for at least five years, that's doing a turnover of at least 5 million, maybe that's five employees. Or you could say, well, I want someone that's run a big family business and now they want to retire and help with transferring wealth to the next generation or the business or whatever the case might be. Um, but, you know, part of the training is also obviously uh, learning how to do the marketing. The marketing and sales is a really important part. So post the, um, uh, actually prior to the launch and, and through that, you have to get all the marketing going. So the reality is, is that the ideal business model is that you have the coach and you have what we refer to as a business development manager, which is someone that helps you run the practice, but also does a lot of the marketing for you. And you can figure out how to do that. So you can outsource some of it or whatever, or you can 
keep some of some of it in house. But what I did is, is you know, I, I didn't really take any money out the business initially, but I appointed a business development manager as soon as I could. Um, because I just knew that, you know, being creative and, and coming up with the right copy and really understanding digital marketing and so on wasn't really my strong suit. And I think, you know, if that's not your thing, that, that's also fine. But also, I think what's important is to understand that the local ML offers, in other words, Harry's offers and, and Peter's offers in, in South Africa, as well as the global offers, provide a lot of support with the technology and so on and so forth as well. So, you know, if you're not sure how to do the social media or the email campaigns or whatever the case might be, there's help and support available. You, no one's going to do it for you, but, the, you know, the, the knowledge base and the tools and, and so on and so forth is, 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 is there. So, think, Megan, you, know, you started in September. When did Megan join your business? When did you appoint her? So, yeah, so I appointed her uh, just about a little bit of a false start with COVID in between, but this was straight, this was August, 2020. So, okay. so, so I, I guess I, year, I tried to get kind of later, yeah, about a year, about, about a year think, in, yes. You know, it's important to, for people listening just to get perspective of the timing. So he has an accountant, nice guy, really sharp, dry sense of humor, but an accountant, <laughs> no sales and marketing experience. Um, no real network. You're definitely not going to be talking uh, business to Hein on the bicycle because he's probably 300 kilometers ahead of you. Um, yet your conversion rate and getting on clients was for you pretty easy in the beginning. And by your own admission, you didn't think that you were that good, yet you've still got some of those first clients. So what are maybe some other challenges in those early stages? When you were on your own, Megan hadn't joined yet, you're getting your business up and running. The sales and marketing had to be done, but your conversion rate was pretty good. What were other challenges that you had in that initial phase? I, I think there's no way to sugarcoat it. it no, it honestly. Was really hard. It, was, it was really hard work, you know, because you one person. So the way I started is I opened the blank Excel spreadsheet. And I typed, I typed in there, name, phone number, email address. And I started typing, who do I know that owns a business? And that was the start of my database that today is 9,000 business owners. Okay, so, um, so, so you know, that, that's the challenge. And then, you know, you have to really initially do it all yourself unless you can hire help. So my thinking was, I just from the start promised myself two things. Um, that was I'm stuffed if I'm putting my, my, my hand into my own pocket to pay royalty fees and i'm stuffed if i'm going to pay a business development manager out of my own pocket in other words what i said is the business must generate that from the start okay okay so 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 i, I just and i i managed to do that and you know got off to, to a pretty good start but <clears throat> excuse me that doesn't just happen you got to do the marketing so that's a lot of graft and and you know, you, you have to get to grips with all of those things. And, and I think it's actually good to do that because, you know, you go and learn yourself how to do the Facebook or the LinkedIn or the email campaigns or so on and so forth. So by the time you get around to employing the business development manager, you also know how to, how to do those things. If you want to, you can obviously hire someone from, from the start, but then, you know, you have to fund it. But I think the thing that people might find daunting is the, is the selling because, you know, people, uh, not everyone's a salesperson or so people think. And, you know, people often think, oh, you got to be born with the gift of the gab or, or whatever they, they might call that. But I think the, 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 the benefit of the action coach process is that there's literally a 13 step sales process that you get taught in your training and it gets sort of like drilled into you and you role play it and you practice it and so on and so forth. And I think like, with, there's a system and a process for everything at Action Coach. So if you're good at following the system, you're very likely to be successful. If you don't use the system and you say, well, you know, I'll figure it out myself or I do it different in my own way, that's risky because you've got something that's tried and, and, and tested. And sometimes, yes, I, I guess we all drift a little bit and you improvise there or something, you forget something or whatever the case might be, but the system works. 
So, I mean, I've never been in a selling role in my life, you know? So my, my, my life was doing financial year ends, getting budgets approved, sitting on board meetings, approving remuneration committee stuff and so on and so forth. So, you know, the whole selling needn't be something that, that you worry about. So if you can follow a system and a process, you know, the, the, the selling takes care of itself. And, and, and it really is, is, is that simple. The marketing is, you got to do a lot of marketing. So I think, and, and I find this across all business owners that they completely underestimate how much marketing they got to actually do and across how many platforms and how many people that needs to reach because it's just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a numbers game. Mm-hmm. And, and um, I think the other thing is, is that you, you got to have a reasonably thick skin in terms of, because, you know, it's, I think, I guess it's like in any sales process, people will say no. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you, you know, you also get- They won't say no and they'll just avoid you. Same difference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess so, yeah. yeah. yeah so they, they stop taking your calls or, or whatever the case might be. Yeah. And then, you know, you also get taught the, the techniques to overcome objections and so on. But the reality is you'll get a lot of no's. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so it's about your mindset around that. So no means next opportunity. Or, you know, well, I got to get to through all the no's until I get to a yes or whatever the case might be. So, you know, I think... Yeah, so so I had that that initial success. I, I think I I got the conversion rate award in, initially, in terms of you know how many sort of sales meetings you do versus how um how many clients you you actually get, and you know so so I was just like it was really important for me to get out out the blocks flying, and you know yeah so the business launched the uh, and it, you know, obviously September um, October November December was the break. January, February built reasonable um, sort of momentum. And then, yeah, we was right in the midst of COVID. So in, in March, I can't remember exactly, mid-March, 20th of March, everything went into a hard lockdown. And uh, yeah, so, so that, was a, that was an interesting challenge. So, so let's talk a little bit about that, that because you go into a hard lockdown. The transition is easy. You know, most of the clients, in fact, all the clients stayed on, but not everybody could pay. So you did deals, you negotiated, you committed to helping everybody through the mess that everybody found themselves in. And obviously you had an initial dip. Yet within a few months, despite COVID, you had record months, even I think it was August, the month that that Megan joined. So she hadn't even joined yet. And you had a record month and you'd got beyond the 150,000 in turnover level within a year of business and lockdown and on your own, how? What happened oh. post the initial setback to give that kickback that happened? Oh, look, I, look I, I think the whole business, mm-hmm. uh, no one knew what, what was actually going on. So, so we all just, I certainly went into overdrive. So we were, everything went online as most businesses did, but we didn't, we, we knew that we had to really step up our game to, to help clients. And a lot of them were really panicking and clients were reaching out to us and we were doing pro bono seminars and help to clients and, and so on and so forth. And actually ended up adding a whole bunch of clients through that process. Some of the existing clients we had to look after. So when they came along and said like, listen, the mall's closed, I can't trade. I said, fine, I won't charge you. I'll charge you less or whatever the case may be. Let, let's work through this. And often, you know, when, when someone came to me and said, well, you know, I got to stop coaching. I, I said, well, you know, what you actually need now is more coaching, not less coaching. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so we stuck with, with, with the clients, helped them through that. I guess that helped with, with referrals as, as, as well. But, you know, it was just being focused and worked, work, working really hard through that process. And yes, I think, you know, actually, actually getting the, the help and support from a business development manager is a bit of a is a, is a game changer as well, because you know what we what we do in our business with our clients is also look very carefully at how they spend their time, and we're completely congruent in terms of you know what we coach our clients to do is what we do as well. So one of the key things is to go and look at what is the activities that you should be doing and that you shouldn't be doing. So, 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 so clearly it makes a lot of sense after the initial startup and so on 
to move the activities that isn't directly revenue generating to someone else. So for example, someone to manage your diary, someone to set your appointments, someone to you know, do the routine marketing stuff and, and so on and so forth. So that, that unlocks value, value quite, quite quickly as well, because then you know, as, the, as a coach, you, either, you should either be selling or you should be coaching you know, and, 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 and doing the other marketing stuff that, that, that might, you might be personally required for like, you know, doing a promotional video or, or, or whatever the case might be. But um, yeah, so, so I think that was the, that was the, the process. So the, yeah, the first bit was really hard work, but, but also really exhilarating in terms of the whole ride and, and, and so on. And then, you know, you, you get to the, obviously to the point where, where you start having a, a customer base. And I, th I think the other thing to add just to, just on the numbers is that you know I was two like I said two things I wasn't gonna you know put my hand into my own pocket to pay franchise fees or to to pay a, a a practice manager but net net I think the numbers are a little fuzzy in my head right now but it was eight or nine months that I had that I recouped recouped the full initial investment so you're buying the the um you know the franchise for a seven year period. But, you know, you got to go and do your sums and go and see if you buy a, a fast food franchise or anything like that, what is, what is your payback and what is your actual return on, on, on the business? I think the, the, the caveat to that is that, you know, you're working in the business to a large extent, if you think about that. So, so when you, there's different models, but when you're a, a single coach, it is your coaching work that equals the, you know, the revenue of the business. So you're the production so, machine, you know, you're delivering the service. So it's you. Yeah. Ab 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 absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so, so it's not a so-called passive income type, type business, mm -hmm. but it, the, the, the payback and the returns are pretty good. And then, you know, I particularly haven't actually been that good at it. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, need to, I need to work on that. But the leverage programs can be very lucrative because, you know, if you're able to put 15 or 20 business owners in a group program, your hourly rate actually go, goes, goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, um, but, but, you know, so, and, and there are coaches that actually get that, get that right. So, so that means that you can work less for more. But when, you, when you're just coaching one-on-one -on -one client, it's, you know, one hour's work for one hour's sort, sort, of, sort of pay. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think on I, that, I think it, and you, you're 100% right. And, and another caveat is you must put in the work. You, you shared, you, you put in the work, you put in the effort. Now, there's very few places in the world, especially legal businesses, I suppose you could find some illegal ones, that you'll get a nine-month payback and you'll be able to still cycle and look after health and all the rest of it. So I think as humans, whether you're a glass half full, glass half empty kind of guy, you need a balance. You, you need, if you're just excited about an opportunity, and this one's easy to fall in love with, you know, you help people, you share your experience, you make a difference. Yeah, 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 that's great. If that's your only reference point, then you have to go look at some of the concerns. We've chatted through some of that. If you're a glass half empty kind of guy, well, then we're only worried about the concerns. We're only worried about the detail. We never look at the positive side. And unless you've got a balance of both, you're often going to make the wrong decision. So we've spoken through some of the challenges. We've spoken through some of the frustrations. And please, guys, if you've got any questions for Hein, please type them in and we'll do some questions shortly. Let's look at the, the rewards. You're coming up for almost three years. We've gone through arguably the, one of the toughest patches in living memory that human beings have gone through, through COVID, the distraction. Um, You've had KZN rioting last year. You've had flooding this year. You chose to up and uproot and you and your wonderful wife are living in Mauritius, yet you're still continuing the business in Belito. So with the, high, the benefit of hindsight, what are the rewards? What are the, the, the feel-good factors that keep you in this business and make it an enjoyable uh, journey for you? Yeah, yeah. Firstly, I think obviously the you know the ability to make a difference. For, um, I mean, you 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 can't fault that, and 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 you know you really do feel great 
about helping business owners. The reality is, is that no business owner is going to keep paying you good money if you don't make them more money and, and add, add the, the value to their business. But I, but I think the, the thing that I found that's really awesome is that you can, and this is what we coach our clients to do as well, is to build a business that gives you the lifestyle that you want. You know, so, so you can decide, listen, I really want to go full tilt on this thing. And you can make incredible amounts of money. That comes with a trade-off. Okay. So, 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 so that means you can, you, can, you can make the big bucks. But that also means that you, you're going to coach and you're going to work really hard. So, you know, you're going to have to do the 16-hour days unless you're really good at the leverage programs or whatever the case might be. You, you, you might have to work weekends or whatever the case might be. You know, I sort of got the business off to, to a good start. Um, and then also, you know, went through a process where I said, well, you know, let's, let's rejig our lives a little bit, um, balance how we look at our sort of financial future and so on. And I think the awesome, and, and I had to do a lot of work outside of Action Coach to, to sort that out. You know, ugh, long story, but I had to sell a whole bunch of properties and fix all investments and so on and so forth. But the, the beauty of that was, is that, you know, I could take probably, I think it was six, six months or more and focus on that, but still do enough in, in, with the clients in Action Coach to, you know, to, for, for, for that to not survive, it's almost, I guess, thrive. Um, and then, you know, refocus on that. And, and, and you know, there's, often, there's, there's a very direct relationship between what you get in, what you put in and what you get out. Mm. So if you do the marketing and the sales and so on, then you can add clients again. So, yeah, you know, we, we, we chose to, you know, go, I think just to rewind a little bit. During COVID, our whole business went online and I kept it like that. Because then, then you have a flexible business. So we we sort of said, well, wouldn't it be awesome to do a stint in Mauritius? I said, okay, well, fine, cool, let's do that. So we moved to Mauritius. So I'm talking to you from Peribir, one of the nicest beaches in Mauritius. It's just out a block away from 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 where I'm sitting. Awesome lifestyle. Um, sorry to say, but no load shedding, very little crime, and so on and so forth. <laughs> but um, you know, we, we're able to do that. And remember the action coach offering is scalable across many, many countries. You know, so we've we've like haven't worked that hard at it, but did a little bit of marketing on, on the island and so on. And you know, we've we've now signed our first one-on-one -on -one Mauritius client. And I think you know there's there's potential in that as well. But most importantly as well, we've actually added all not yeah, you know, a reasonable amount of clients in South Africa whilst I'm sitting in Mauritius. So my business manager is living in Belito, Megan. Um, but, you know, we do all the marketing work online. We do the selling online. So I have clients that I've never met that in person that, that I coach. And we have a quarterly planning uh, meeting. We call it the growth club where we get all the clients together. And, and you know, we'll, I'll collab we'll collaborate with a couple of coaches. So we'll have 50, 60 clients in the room and we do a really nice day for them but then you know i'll go there and meet one of those clients someone that's been coaching with me for a long time in person there for the first time but you know all the systems are also online so for example the documents that the clients have to do they have they log on to the system they can watch educational videos business education videos on there their documents they submit there and the records of the coaching and, and, and so on and so forth is all online. It's, it, it's part of the systems. So I think the, to me, one of the most important things in life is to have choices and options. And quite frankly, having money and time gives you that. That's what, that's what, we, that's what we tell our, our clients as well, or coach our clients. And, and that, is, that is the truth. So, so that's been really important for me is, is to, have, to have options in terms of you know, where you can operate from and so on and so forth. I have to say that I think the, the coaches that have the deep networks and they're really focused on a local area and they get to know all the business owners and so on and so forth, I think they can do really well as in, in that space as well. But, you know, I think the, the nature of the system and the process is that you can really go into any market 
do the marketing techniques and so on and so forth and get clients mm -hmm. uh, because you you know you you, you got to follow this follow the system so yeah and and like i say you you can decide if you if you work really hard and focus and so on you can make a lot of money um if you if you want to do less that that's fine and i think you know the the reality as well as is that you know there are i guess it's not for everyone mm -hmm. I, I think they you know there are guys that, that that might battle with the selling or the marketing or, or or whatever the case might be but i but but to me if you have to drive um you're willing to do the work and you can follow a system then you know it's uh it really is very doable okay so we've got two questions in from andre i'm going to ask you them now just just going back to your comp, your point around making an impact, making a difference, and there have been many examples, many stories. Maybe just highlight two for the benefit of those listening. You know, what are those make a difference, make an impact um, kind of moments that when you look back, you go like, "Wow, that was special." Um, yeah, look, uh, I think there 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 are there are many, um, but but you know, the one is probably one of my one of my very first clients. Um, company that's in the petrochemical industry and they were you know they were a little bit all, all over the show and started you know so they were doing all right but you know they, the business had been around for for 30 37 odd years or so at that stage but they were a little you know not focused and so on and so forth so started started working with them and got really good traction in terms of you know building the team getting the, the directors to align getting proper marketing in, getting proper sales tech techniques in and so on and so forth. And, and, you know, they did really well from a profitability point of view and from a cash flow point of view. But the benefit of that was that the owner of the business, this, the CEO, now literally doesn't even live in South Africa anymore. So, so we, our, our definition of a business is we build a commercial profitable enterprise that can work without you. So he literally lives in Southampton in the UK. There's a team called directors that run the business here. Mm -hmm. um, we st I still do the coaching and, you know, you'll sit in on, on Zoom and so on and so forth. But he, he literally doesn't have to be run, do anything in the business. It, it, it carries on. Um, he likes to get involved and still put his order in and so on and so forth. But, you know, the, the, the business works and it's really profitable. And it's expanding into several African, other African countries, the latest being, so, so they're in uh, Namibia, Botswana, latest being Ghana, they're coming into Mauritius and so on and so forth. So, mm -hmm. you know, really great story. And I think the little bit of a backstory behind that is that his son um, is, is autistic. And the only place where he could find the best long-term care for him was the, the United Kingdom. Because you know, it, it, it's about finding a permanent solution where we where, where could live and so on. So, sorting that business out actually facilitated the owner and his family moving to the UK and then you know getting into a space where they could have proper proper care for the for 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 the um the, the son you know the the, the son that, that that's autistic. So 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 those those are awesome. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, so there's many of those, like, you know, one of, one of the other bigger clients, for example, he was running a steel business and feeling and, and just really stressed out of his skull in terms of people not coming to work and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we went through the process, appointed a general manager, business is running really nicely. Um, he's now uh, at the end of June, getting on, on an airplane going to France and he's going to switch off his phone, pedal his bicycle around the French mountains for, I guess, four weeks. And he'll come back and he'll have a business that's been running like clockwork and probably made more money than when he's around. Yeah. So those are the sort of, you know, type of impacts that, that we're able to, able to have in business. Of course, it takes work and commitment and, 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 and so on. But there are many, many of, many of those type of, uh, type of stories that, yeah, like that, you said, uh, you know, there, there, there are many i think the nice thing is 
you, again, you use the word right in the beginning, congruency. And you've chosen to build a vehicle, a business as a vehicle to serve you. And you've helped other people do the same, irrespective of where you're wanting to go as a human, you know, you need to build a vehicle to do that. And, you know, whether it be get the business right so that I can look after my kid, give them different opportunities, whether it's get the business right so I can go and spend time, you know, cycling the, the Tour de France route, whether I do it for myself and say, well, you know, I don't want to be the top earner as an action coach in South Africa, but I want to live in Mauritius and cycle and have a good business that I've never had to put money into. All is possible with the right intention and focus. So let's look at some of the questions. I think the first one here from, from Andre, a very relevant one. He asks, you know, to what extent do you apply your corporate experience to the coaching process versus the tools and training that you've received from Action Coach? So it, it, it's a little bit of a mix of both. So I think you have to primarily use the Action Coach tools and processes, you know, um, but you do bring some of your corporate background along but, but, but and that is beneficial, but I think it'd be a waste to to try and think that you can you can run this business based on on your corporate knowledge. So you almost have to like like a little bit forget about what you did and how how you did things. So just the you know there are examples and experiences that that you can bring in, but the um you know the, the key thing is use the system and 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 apply that and it's 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 plenty to 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 be successful. And for the benefit of Andre, for you, but for anybody else listening too, I remember just a quick story on that. A, a really a young lady looking to become an action coach and, and she'd still done more coaching certifications than I've seen anybody do, even those with doctorates in coaching. And she was adamant. She wants to come to this business. I said, well, sorry, I don't think you've got enough experience, but fine, come to Discovery Day. And she sat in this office that I'm presenting from now. And at the end, actually at lunchtime, you could see, you know, quite a daunted look on her face. And by the end of the day, she said in the closing comments, she said, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. I can't do this. I cannot do at the level of what you do, do it. Um, the theory that, you know, the coaching skills, you can extract the value is perfect, but I've realized that's not enough in this space. And I think what, what is important about your experience, and that's why we look at it as an individual before you come in on board, it's the stories, both the war stories, the, the good examples and the bad examples that take the tools, the systems, the training and make it come alive. I think anybody could present the, the, the system, you know, and Hein referenced it a few times, it's that good. But you don't have the credibility that earns the right to get in there in the first place. And it's coloring in the picture, which is your experience and your background and examples and scenarios that become um, important to you. So a, a, a combination, probably leading with the, 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 the action coach system and then um, pulling along your, your experience for sure. Second question here, is there collaboration between franchises or do you apply Chinese walls? Yeah, so, so we collaborate a lot. I think, you know, so, so I guess there's a little bit of an element of competition, but, but, you know, there's a community. So we have conferences together every morning. There's uh, every Monday morning, there's a webinar and you can literally pick up the phone or your email and get in touch with any of the thousand coaches across the world and especially the South African or the regional ones. And the culture is that people will help you. So if I say, listen, I'm, I've just started coaching an attorney. We also coach as an, an attorney. And people will put up their hand and, and, and they will help you. So we collaborate on things like, um, you know, for example, our quarterly planning sessions. So three or four of our coaches will pool the costs and, and look after clients and so on and so forth. And I think, you know, we have a, a, an understanding that if someone's working with a client or a prospect, you, you, you don't sort of try and take, someone else's client um, because we also have an abundant mindset so there's lots and lots of businesses and opportunities out there so there's no need we're just scratching the surface of, of the need out there so there's no need to try and you know work with someone else's clients or, or or whatever the case might be so yes really a close cooperation and I, I guess you become good good friends and colleagues over over time as well so um I guess there's a little bit of Chinese walls because most people, most coaches have their own databases that they market to, and there's a little bit of an overlap. But also the reality is, is although it's the same system, different clients would be 
sometimes prefer to work with different coaches. So there's either you gel or you don't. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if they can, so if I'm in Belito and there's a client that really uh, resonates with one of, one of the other coaches, that's fine, you know, so be it. And, and, and in, in this sort of digital environment these days, you know, clients can actually be all over depending on how you, how you structure your, your action coach business. Yeah, so I think you know, each coach runs their own business. They'll have their own database, they'll have their own team, they'll do their own focus. I think that's the norm. Um, in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Uh, that's actually from Ray Kroc that um, obviously was instrumental in, in launching McDonald's to, to the world. Um, but it's not unique to, to Hein and his team. Hein collaborates um, with Trevor and with Luke and with Shirley. And Shirley's got two other coaches. So in the last growth club, there would have been six coaches together. And sometimes one's running the online session, one's running the local session. Uh, you know, there, there's that support. Others do their own. Others, you know, in different regions collaborate on bigger scale, smaller scale. Um, it, it does differ, but I think it's, it's all one overarching umbrella um individual businesses but as a collective and i think that is for sure uh the power a question here let's just have a look uh so have we have we had action coaches franchises who first started out on their own and then decided later to join action coach um uh, yeah so i don't think hein will will know that we have had coaches that have done coaching courses um the, the ones that we've had haven't, I wouldn't say they've aggressively started their coaching journey. They, they, they had a passion for coaching. They went to one of the business schools and did a coaching course and they were now ready to launch and they you know, started picking up some clients. Um, I wouldn't say they were proactively running those businesses and then they came across us and then they rather joined our business and, and they still use maybe some of those skills that they learned there with what they've got here. Um, but they used this business for a few things. Um, and, you know, this is their experience back to us. Is one, there's a brand. I'm not a one-man band on my own with a business card and I'm on my own. There's a, there's a built-in credibility, a brand, a system, 30 years of history, 80 countries, collaboration. They brought it for that. They brought it for the community because it was lonely. I had the theory of how to coach, but I had no you know, no community. And with that community, probably a, a, a point two and a half was the support. Uh, I wasn't isolated. I wasn't on my own. And, and the fourth element there is the system. Um, I remember in the early days, we just launched Action Coach in South Africa. And somebody did a coaching course with, with quite a reputable coaching school. And the lady said to me, I ruined people's lives for the first two years. I said, what? <laughs> you did one of the better coaching courses how can you say that she said well I was taught the theory of coaching I had no way to apply it and it's in that application of trialing and error that I think I ruined people's lives and you know I equated to you know somebody becoming a chef somebody becoming an accountant somebody becoming an IT programmer that's the skill that you've got that's great that doesn't make you successful in running the business of that so it's the other elements that they've come to us and looked at so that's why so I'm looking at the time, Hein. It's been great to have you. I'm going to keep everybody on time. Maybe in two sentences, they've listened to you. They've shared some of your fears. You've answered some of the questions. Your recommendation to people whether they should or shouldn't join Action Coach if they're sitting listening to you um, on this call. Yeah, I'm, I mean, absolutely. I, I think it depends on where you're at. You know, so it certainly can help you to build the lifestyle. That, that, that you want you know it certainly can give you flexibility um and uh, you know if, if you're in that space then then absolutely go for it you you can really craft a business that that can give you everything that you want and 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 you you have that trade-off where you can decide well what is the what how much do i want to work how much money do i need and build the business to support that that lifestyle um, and, and then, of course, you know, just bear in mind the things that I, that, I, that I said in terms of following the system. It's hard work initially, but like with anything, what you put in is what you get out. So the rewards do, do come. Mm. Brilliant. Hein, thanks very much. Uh, I saw one question creep in towards India. We don't have time to go into detail, but yes, Hein did look at a few options. 
he did look at some other companies um, and that's often a good thing because you can evaluate um, you know compare apples with apples or if it's apples with pears look at those differences so if that's where you're sitting it's always a good idea to do thank you for joining us today uh, whether it is live or you're listening to this on the recording hopefully you've been able to see a little bit about the personality behind the business some of the real realities maybe touching on some of the, the excitement or some of the concerns that you had and uh, i really appreciate your time and for everybody else for investing it to go through this have a fantastic uh, evening or afternoon wherever you are and uh, we hope for, look forward to engaging with you soon thanks everyone Cheers. Bye -bye. Thank you, guys. Awesome to see you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Eh?